Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be demonstrating how to write a test class. Uh, so this one is a bit different because this involves consumption of an API. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so what we have to do, we have to mock uh, an API call uh, because in uh, Apex uh, test class, you can't really invoke a real time API code. So we have to keep that into consideration, right? Um, so I will tell you a, a good way to write a test class uh, to avoid the data duplication. So uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, let's go to the developer console, as you can see. So these are the things we did last time. Uh, so if you haven't watched my <clears throat> previous episode, I would highly encourage you to do so. Okay, so let's go to file and go to Apex class. So we can say product um uh test class yeah we can do this yeah uh, it's gonna take okay so now what we do we will annotate this with this uh is test so now it's a test class right now the thing with about writing a test class right so you can you can do uh different ways right uh the simple and more efficient way uh, to create a, um, a test factory. So what I meant by that, let's say you have a test class which involves creation of a, a similar sort of data again and again, right? So it's better to create a, a test factory, uh, create a data, uh, so create so which uh, can trigger your create aspect of it. So in this case, we don't really need any kind of a test uh, factory, uh, I mean, we don't really need a data creation process. All we need to do is to mimic an API, right? So, but that being said, we will still going to create a separate class. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I will do a something called um, API uh, mimic test. Yeah. So this is uh, the name of the, the, the class. So what I'll do, I'll annotate this with as uh, each test. So because what happens is that if you uh, use uh, at the rate each test, uh, this class will not be included as a part of the code coverage, right? Otherwise, what happens when you try to deploy uh, this part of a code, right, to the production, uh, then it will complain saying there's no test class found, right? So, okay. so. Uh, Apex has given us something called HTTP callout mark, right? So that's a uh, kind of a um, uh, interface. So we will uh, create a, a simple um, a class here which implements that interface. So what we do, we're going to do public uh, class. Uh, I will do HTTP mark. Um, sorry, mark test. Yeah. Going to do implements, oh, implements, uh, HTTP callout mock. Yeah, so that will do the job. So this is a class. So, and we're going to define some variables. So, because what we are after APIs, right? API, when you write an API code, right? Or when you do a kind of an API stuff in Apex. You do know, right? You need to pass a body. Uh, you need to pass a header, right? So that's the two things which we are after. So we do. Uh, so we're gonna see the body well, yeah. I'm gonna do private string uh, header well, okay. And so we're gonna create a constructor which accepts this value. So we do public uh, HTTP mock test, yeah. And we're just gonna pass string. A body and it says string a header and we will assign this to this dot body well uh, equals to a body yeah and this dot uh, header well uh, equals to um, a header yeah so this completes our construction uh, but there is a method which we need to uh, implement because as you know that if you are um, implementing an interface right you're you're having the you're you're forming a contract with the interface to say look whatever methods you got I will implement it okay 
So, so that's exactly what it's complaining here. See, implement the system dot uh, a stupid response. So, what we do here? So, let me expand this one here, just to make it more, give us more space, right, to code. Um, I would have done this in Visual Studio Code, but just to keep it consistent, since I've been doing in uh, developer consoles, I thought I might as well continue this, right? So, okay. Uh, so we're going to do public, uh, HTTP, uh, response, respond, yeah. Um, so this is something we call HTTP request, yeah. And you're going to do rest. So I've done this so many times, that's why I remember, you know, <laughs> without looking. Uh, otherwise, you know, if I don't, Remember, I just Google it. So, you know, there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of if you say that you Google it because, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a time uh, savior, right? So that's, that's pretty what it is. So, okay, so requests, sorry. Um, new HTTP response. Okay, so that's great. Oh, come on. Um, so we can do rest dot set body. So this uh, not rest. Yeah, set body. <clears throat> uh, so we're just gonna pass this um, this body well here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, that I got just got a sore throat. So my apologies. Um. So but I just kind of it's just a weather change, you know. Um. And plus, drinking beer don't help either. <laughs> so, okay. Um, sorry, I digress. So, um, content um, type. Um, uh, so, just going to pass on um, header. Well, because, you know, uh, we need to know the content type, right? If it's an application um, type JSON or if you're passing at XML. So in our case, uh, it's a JSON, but just making it more flexible, right? So you can reuse this, you know, stuff later if you want it. Yeah. So we're gonna do rest dot set status code. So what we're gonna do? So we're gonna set the status code as two hundred. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do, and it's just gonna return rest. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, let's see if we, if we can compile the uh, save the code. Okay, so that looks nice and easy, right? So we got a, a mimic test class, and uh, which you know within that class we got another class called HTTP mock test, right? Um, so what we do now we have to create a uh, API, uh, mimic API. So for that I need a data. So that's so what I've did. So this is the. Um, if you remember, this is the API use. So I, I copy this data here. Yeah, so I copy the data here and I pasted this here. So I'm just going to copy the, you know, and tidy up a bit. So <clears throat> what we do, um, so let's say uh, we're going to go out of this class. Okay, and so we'll do something called uh, public uh, st static void create api data yeah and so we do string body equals to for now keep it as such yeah um and then we're gonna do uh, so something like http um so uh mock test yeah so we're gonna do http mock test uh, API mark oh, come on equals to new HTTP mock test now this is where I created a constructor for and so we're gonna pass um, oh, come on application J sorry slash JSON because we're dealing with the uh, the JSON class yeah if you know that uh, this is the, we're not dealing with XML right so this is clear, uh, crystal clear JSON, right? Okay, cool. Um, and we're gonna do something called system.test.setMock. Uh, this is a method, 
uh, provided to us by Salesforce. So we're going to pass this API mock here. And in this case, it just pretty straightforward. HTTP uh, call out mock dot class. Yeah. So that's pretty much what you have to do. Okay. Uh, let's see if it works. First of all, okay. So now we got to pass the body here. So let me copy this boy here. Uh, now I use this LibreOffice. Like I don't use Windows uh, at home. I mean, it's nothing against Windows. It's okay. I mean, but if you're if because I I do a lot of stuff apart from Salesforce. Um, you know, sometimes I fiddle with the, the kernel part of the code and Ubuntu gives me a pretty flexibility for that. I'm old school, so yeah. Uh, I mean, so, okay, so that, that will do the job, eh? So pretty nice and easy. So I copied the, so this is what I've done. So I copied uh, a body, which is exactly what you, get from an API so you know since we got a few data so I copy the data and so you might in your real life scenario you might have to copy a part of it right because imagine if you got like 10,000 you know uh, lines of code a JSON returning you you can't copy paste that so you just need to you know split that into small part uh, which sure works your you know for your uh, code okay so that's done uh, now we're gonna, uh, okay, so we got an error here, which is expected, typical. Um, so let's see what is the problem here. Uh, oh, something wrong. Uh, okay, um, so let me see what is the problem here. Okay, so this is a problem here, I guess. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, it happens because when you're dealing with the, you know, big chunk of a string data. Okay, so that's great, right? So you can just do control A, um, you know, ship tab. If you want to tidy the code, you know, I always prefer to tidy the code. It's easy to read. Yeah. Okay, so that's, this looks nice and easy. Okay, so now we're going to do the, uh, the, the product test, the main test class. Uh, so one thing you have to understand that, you know, if you're after... Uh, so if your uh, test class expecting a lot of data, pre pre created data, so it's always good to create it here uh, under you know test setup. Uh, but the thing with the test setup is that, like I said, uh, you know the reason why I mentioned about the test factory. So for instance, if you have to deal with account creation at say four different places in a in a different test class, so it's good to put a a class called test factory. And inside of test factory, put a method called create account, right? And then you can use it in other test class as test factory dot create account, right? And pass the values. So that will do the job of creating account. So you see, it simplifies your uh, your process of creating an account again and again. So it's just like you have account creation at one place and you're reusing it. So that's the best practice I prefer to use. So, I mean, it's up to you. If you like to go that route, but even the sales will recommend that. So, okay. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do void uh, test insert test uh, API uh, test product API. Okay. So what we do? And so we just I'm gonna um, do. So we need this data. So we will go here, API mimic test, and just gonna pass this API mimic test. Uh, dot, I tell you why I've created this. You will get to know uh, in five minutes time when, when I write another test class, a test method. Okay, so what we do, so we're gonna go back to, um, this method product batch right so we grab this boy here so we need to uh, look make sure uh, we cover 
at least 75 percent right uh of the code coverage you know that you know ideally you should do 90 percent right 90 90 to 95 but for some reason if you if, if, if it's way too complicated if, if your code reaches 80 that's okay um so because salesforce won't let you deploy the code if it's less than you know 75 percent it has to be 75 and above okay so <clears throat> so we do this here um and we just go to the this one so i'm testing my product model and product controller now so that's exactly what i'm doing here and so this is the code yeah and let me see if i can save it and right so now i need to look at the product api name so let me look at the product controller so this is the name I'm after, Brew Product. So what I do, I go here and I'm just gonna do Brew Product uh, P equals to um, uh, select select ID from Brew Product limit one, right? So what I'm testing to see uh, if API if this call is successful in inserting a data from an API, right? So Right now, you're, because since your test class won't look at underlying um, data, so if you wanted to do that, you can do that here by, you know, by setting the C data equals to true, but that's not really good practice. So it's always, unless it's extremely complicated for you to create a, a test data, right? Okay, so it, it can happen at certain scenario though, so right. So case by case, so. Okay, so in this case, right, uh, so if I don't call this code, right, so this will be, uh, there won't be any value under brew product, right? It will not return anything, okay? So in this case, what happens? Um, so we will do, uh, so I will put this in system uh, dot test uh, dot start test. Yeah, and I will put it as system dot test um, dot stop test. Yeah, so now we need to use something called a set just to see if, if, if it's been successful. So what we do, system.assert, we can do um, b.id uh, not equals to null. So what happens is, so when you run this piece of a code, right, um, it expects that, you know, you will be getting some data uh, in return right so what i meant by data is uh, i meant by brew product right um so if this if this code fails or if this part of a code fails like api mimic test then uh then what happens is then your entire test class will say oh okay sorry test method this the specific test method will fail okay so now um we got an error here uh, sorry, not the B. Oh, sorry, I mean. Also, one thing I just wanted to point out: it's always good to put the meaningful um, test methods, right? Please do not put test one, test two, test three, right? I mean, if you are the only developer who ever going to work, even then, it's not a good practice because you might come back to it after six months and say, "What the heck is test one?" Right? doesn't make any sense okay so now the moment of truth we'll run this test okay so we'll do run test we're gonna have to write um, you know two more test methods okay so I don't know what happens so let's see if it works okay right so okay so it's successful right fantastic so if you see a green sign here right it says successful okay so let's look at the product controller let's look at the code coverage um, it has 80%, so you can see that it's not triggering this, which is okay. I mean, you can, so that means you can alter your code if you wanted to. So I'm not going to bother with that now. So it is 80%, so which is okay. I mean, ideally speaking, 80 is okay. I mean, it's not bad, you know, but if you can aim for 95, which is great, but since you can't, for whatever reason, it's okay. I mean, it just depends upon your you are the team leader who's going to review your code, right? So, and if I be your team leader, if I be your tech lead, uh, I will probably ask you to go back and fix it. 
right? At least bring back with 90%. So that's me. You know. I'm not being mean or I'm not being demanding, but, you know, so. But like I said, you know, case by case, if you can prove to me that it's very difficult to make it to 90%, and so, yeah, we can stick with 80 so that's fine. Okay, so this class won't be covered, right? Um, so, oh, yeah. So, okay, so we have a test method for this as well. So, see, so this is covered as well. So we got 100%. Um, so that's great. And the product schedule, there won't be any. Oh, no, so that is, oh, no. Oh, sorry, that's not the case. Okay, so this is great. All right, now what we're going to do, um, we're going to have to write a test method for the batch and the schedule. So in this case, what we've done so far, uh, product test class, that does the job pretty well. Yeah. Um, so you might be wondering why I've uh, seen a test class. I've written a demo test class, you know, before, uh, just to fiddle with something. So you know, so that's why you're seeing it. But don't worry about it. So for now, you see, it got eighty percent coverage. So you know, uh, sorry that. So we get a product test coverage, eighty percent coverage, right? So we got. Uh, 80% coverage for this product test class. So this demo, right? So this, what are you seeing here? Demo here, test batch, right? So I've written the test class uh, because um, I'm I'm using this product JSON parts of product model in somewhere else for another project. You know, just a part of demonstration. So that's why you see that demo, right? So because it involves more other classes, so uh, at the same time, it covers the product model, product batch, product schedule, you know, parser, HTTP controller, you know, other 20 other classes. So, which I haven't demonstrated to you guys, uh, probably in the near future. But so, yeah. Um, so, because uh, I'm doing a, a paid uh, course for uh, integration designer architecture, so I'm, I'm creating a course for that. So, in that, I'm, you know, building more. Because I wanted to make a lot, a, a bit, you know, sorry. Uh, I wanted to make a lot of content associated with the architecture side so that you know what you're doing, right? Not just going into, you know, sit on the exam and pass it. That that defeats the purpose, right? So, all right, sorry I digress. So, you know, just to let you know if you are confused why you're seeing this demo test. So, you know, that's explanation. Okay, so what we do, we're going to do a uh, another... Uh, test class, yeah. So what we say uh, is test static void um, pro uh, product schedule, right? So we're gonna look at the product schedule now, the schedule class. Yeah. So this is the one. Um, so what we do? So we need to do the same st stuff here. Copy it here, and we need a, a cron expression. Cron expression equals to oh, I can use you know something like so uh, six star. Doesn't matter whatever you use, you know. It's just a demo. It's just a test. I'm not really testing a cron expression here, so. So it's all good. So what are you gonna do? System dot schedule. So let me expand this one here. Um, system dot schedule. Okay. So the job name. So we're gonna do update, update test, uh, update schedule. I tell you a uh, one thing which might be very useful for you. Um, and I'll demonstrate that as well, okay? Because I think it, it will be very good. So, and you might you might encounter that scenario. Uh, I'll demonstrate just a second. So what I do, I'm gonna do integer 
number of jobs uh, equals to select count um, so I think it's from a Chrome trigger so what I'm doing is here to see if there are any Chrome job that's been scheduled so we're gonna do the job type equals to seven yeah and so we're gonna do system dot assert um, number of jobs obviously it should be one greater than equals to one so so we're gonna do system dot test dot stop test yeah okay so let me save it and let's see if it works um if it okay it doesn't work for whatever reason cron cron number of job cron job uh detail dot oh, i don't know what the heck is wrong let me have a look count from uh error filter criteria must be ah oh, okay sorry that's right that's absolutely right Yeah, so what we do okay okay that sounds good uh, because it should be a string so what happens is that so I'm writing a, a test class uh, where I run a scheduled task right so when you run a scheduled task it will go under Chrome trigger object right so if so right now the Chrome trigger object has no record right so when you run this uh, line number 21 uh, it will create a Chrome trigger entry, and so that's exactly what I'm testing. Like, if there is an entry, if the record count is greater than or equal to one, that means your class is successful. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Let's have a look. Right at the same time, um, you remember I talked about API mimic. Why do I have to do that separate? See the create API date uh, data. Oh, sorry, that should be data, not date. I'm not doing any API data. Okay, so oh, sorry, that's just a spelling mistake. Okay, I mean, I'm teaching you, you know, how a programmer does stuff, right? You can't be perfect at the first time, right? This is, you know, this is how I write code. You know, I write code, sometimes I make mistakes, I go and fix it, right? So, you know, I haven't seen a programmer who can write, you know, top-notch code in the first time. I mean, you know, there are people who can do it, but I'm not one of them. So, okay, so what we have is the product uh, product class. And so now what we do, so we go here and we look at the test. Okay, so the test is successful, right? Fantastic, no problem whatsoever. Now, you remember I talked about, uh, you know, uh, the one thing I wanted to tell so if you put a space here, right? So this one I'll show you Say you decided to put a space, you know, it's you might think oh, you know, if you look at it It's just a string right what difference it makes Right, let's have a look what difference it makes You see, the test run failed. This is what I'm saying. For some weird reason, right? If you put a space here after this, it will fail the test because it gives a message, something. I'll show you the message, right? Exactly the product schedule. Asynchronous trigger must be, you know, associated with the job detail, right? So which is, so now if you take a space back, save it, and try to run it, you know, <laughs> It's just gonna work, no problem whatsoever. Okay. Now, you see, it's it, it, it ran successfully, right? So that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I will copy uh, the same code here, and I'm gonna because I wanted to test the schedule task now. Uh, sorry, batch. So I will do test uh, product batch. 
So for the product batch, what I do, I will do this. And I will do this. And instead of this, you see, even for this, I do need an API data. So you see, imagine if you are not using this API mimic test, you have to create a data here, create a data here, create a data there. So, you know, and plus, you know, I've seen the code, you know, many times, which is not really good. So, right, okay. And let's say if you wanted to reuse this API data somewhere else, right? You know, so you can do that as well. Oh, it's going to save. Okay, so we got an error here. So P1 uh, prod. Okay, so I'm going to do prod here. So, so if you're hearing a squeaky noise, my sorry, my chair is a bit squeaky. Uh, Okay, so um, let's have a look at what happened here. Uh, okay, so product batch, that's failed. Okay, so that's fine let me just move this out okay um right so what i'll do i'll just move this out and i will create this here and i'll schedule it oh sorry not this one not bad um so Oh, the stop test at the top. Okay, now, uh, and I move this at the top as well. Okay, and I'll save. Um, right. Okay, so I was going to do a run test. You see, it's successful, right? Because, because what happens is that it's an asynchronous process, right? So by the time it reaches here, it says, oh, I couldn't find the data. So I have to move the stop test up. So yeah, that's the job, eh? Okay, so that's, you see, it covers the code. Okay, now let's look at the product schedule. So we will, we are after product tests. So this is 100%. Fantastic, right? Brilliant. So, um, so this is 100% as well. So that's, you know, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about today. So I hope you enjoyed Um the way to write a test class, you know, there are different ways, you know, to write a test class. In my opinion, you know, from my personal experience, what I feel is that, you know, you should write once and and you should reuse it, right? I mean, you should not be creating again and again if you if you if it's about data, right? And then your testing a uh, test class naming convention should be correct. So that depends from business to business, right? Some companies have a you know different coding standards. So that's up to you between you and your uh, tech lead. If you are a tech lead, then you know you might have some standard. If you if you don't have a standard, then it's better to follow the Salesforce uh, coding standard, right? So that's my opinion. I mean, you you are entitled for your own. Right. So that being said, uh, I hope you have an amazing day. Take care. Adios.